Well, while we're preparing, uh, let's go to John's Gospel. We're talking about becoming one, working as one. And what I, what the Lord was just impressing on me to say to you, just to encourage you, that there is, you know, in the world there's a lot of stuff going on, and, and people are faced with a lot of different challenges, and. And the thing about it is that we can get so caught up in everything that's going wrong and, and forget about how good God is. And that even in spite of, in the face of adversity, you're in the place of where God is still preserving you, keeping you, is maintaining your life. Um, God makes a way. It, it always seems like, you know, how's this going to work? You know, because you face different challenges in life and uh, it's, it appears like there's a closed door. You know, see that things things are shutting off, shutting down, but not for God's people. You know, there there's a there's an understanding that all the inventions that are needed to be created, stuff that you know that are created today, or had been invented, it, that that's it. There's there's no more need for patents. There's no more need for anything else. Uh, it, at least it wants the you know our patent laws want to be capped at a certain place. And see, the thing about God, how big is God? And is there any limit to who God is and who and what can be come from Him and what comes through you by Him? There is no limits. And it's, it's everything, everything is limited based on the way we think. And all the issues that we face in life have to do with our, our thought process. If we get everything right, we start first and foremost with our spiritual condition. It has, you have to be born again. You need to accept Jesus as the Lord of your life. Because he's the only person that can fix your spiritual condition. He's the only person that can do that. After that, now it's up to you to live out who you are. And, and, and God comes in and fixes us so that we can be efficient and effective. And, and as we do so, then what's going to be the result? It's going to be increase. It's going to be success and prosperity. And God wants you to prosper. So let me, let me tell you this. Or let me, let me just present this to you. Would it be better for a drug lord, because there was a, a, a recent arrest where there, were, there was millions cash in their house when they did this arrest, this bus, they raided this house. It was by a drug lord, uh, a drug cartel, and his whole, whole house, garage, everything was stacked. With, with money. So you tell me this. Do you think that that money is being used for the glory of God? No. Who's, who's getting the glory out of that? The, the devil is. Wouldn't it be better to be in people's hands like yourselves who have a heart to want to help people? Wouldn't that be better? And see, if we cut ourselves short from where God has taken us, because in God, God provides everything so that we can go ahead and move ahead. If you get stuck in the traditional way of thinking that God doesn't want you to have nothing to make you humble, well, you're going to get jacked up in your life. I guarantee you the devil will make sure of that. Not God. Because God is a blesser, not a cursor. You understand? Not, not a computer cursor. <laughs> All right. Let's go to John's Gospel. Chapter, uh, um, John, chapter 17. Sorry. Sorry. John's Gospel, chapter 17. You got no internet connection. Okay. All right, John's Gospel, chapter 17, verse number 11. He says, and, uh, verse number 11, everybody got it? Yeah. Yeah. And, now, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, and this is now from the original King James, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, talking about Jesus, that, he, that were put into his hands, that they may be what? Do you see what it says there? That we may be one, as we are. The basis to operating as what is known as the number one or a one whole person is that it's a complete individual who's walking and living in integrity. Integrity has to be a part of our everyday life. If we choose, make decisions, off of integrity, away from integrity, then we begin to break down. 
So what will tend to happen is lying comes into play and you start to cheat and get and try to get ahead in life by things that are not that are not right. And you know this within yourself. Yeah, when we're talking about operating in the fullness of God. And, and I'm not talking to people who don't know the Lord, right? Everybody here knows the Lord? Yes, sir. All right. So you all know you know Jesus Christ. So you, you don't have to be concerned about your spiritual well-being because that's taken care of through Christ. Now what you have to bring into play is what needs to be renewed in your mind about who you are and what you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you with me on this? So the only way we can find this out is through the Bible. Now the Holy Spirit will speak to you, but it's if it's not based on the Bible, then you need to cancel that out. Okay? And just because it feel, feels good doesn't mean it's always right. Praise the Lord. I mean, sex feels good. But it's not always right. you got to be what? Married. At least you should be. Right? So, everyone wins when we work as a what? Work as a team. All right. Does God have a playbook? Does he have a rule book? Yes. And if we follow those rules based on the game, the plays will work out. So like any sport, any, any way of operation, in any business, in anything you do in life, God has a way. It has a way of operating. It, it, without the instruction, then there will actually be no rules to follow, and then you have chaos in, in, a, in a business environment. It could be in anything, right? The same thing with, uh, with uh, did you guys see the Clipper game? The last couple game? No. Definitely was a breakdown in communication there. <laughs> Messages were not being received. <laughs> Unfortunately. But nonetheless, what tends to happen when people break down in communication or not having instruction rules on how they operate or how they should be operating, <coughs> then what tends to happen, you don't know what's going to take place. Whatever, you sort of like going along, making mid-course changes as you go along in life, and that gets a little old as time goes on. And you can do you can do mid course change mid course changes, but it's not you know you're, you you got to stay focused on the vision that God places in you, because God puts things inside of you to do, and you and you have to perfect yourself. You got to grow up, make yourself better, and you have to learn what God says about what you're doing. So does God have an answer for everything that's going on in life? Yes. Yes, yes He does. <laughs> right. All right. Let's go. Let's go to Romans chapter fourteen, and we can shut off this overhead projector. So, in, in the light of all that I stated to you, anything you do must be done by faith. Everybody say faith. 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 So, is faith a denomination? No. 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 no, it is not. Faith is a way of life. Faith is the way you choose to live. Faith is an action. And it is, a, it is all hinged off of the way you believe. Belief is the foundation to faith, and faith is the action of what you believe. Okay, based on the Bible, okay? So here he says in, in verse number 22, Romans chapter 14, verse 22, he says, Has thou faith, in a question form, have it to yourself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in the thing which he allowed. Again, a mental position about the decision you're making. In this case, it would have to do with the, with the drinking of the wine and, and the eating the meats. Eating the meats. And those that are uh, vegetarians, they had an issue with that, especially more so because the, the meats were offered to idols. It was a different connotation back in that day. And, and today, it, it could be an offense to people who, who are eating meats and, and those who do not, you know, veg, vegetarians or maybe even vegans. There's even different levels of vegetarians, right? But, but the point being is that could it be offensive? If you allow it to. And, and let me just say this to you. You cannot be offended unless you allow yourself to be offended. Yes. Right. Nobody, nobody can offend you. Right. Nobody makes you feel badly. Nobody makes you feel bad. Nobody makes you feel bad. You allow yourself to feel bad. Badly. Right. Grammar. <laughs> Praise the Lord for the years. Hallelujah. Okay, all right. But... Allowing this, you allow it. You set, you set whatever, whatever God puts in you, and you accept the word. That word becomes your vision. It's where you go, right? He says. So if you don't condemn yourself in this, where will you be? You'll be in the position of faith. Now look at verse number twenty-three. It says, "And he that doubted is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of what faith." And the next phrase says this. For whatsoever is not of faith is what? Sin. Repeat that for me, please. Sin. 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 Say it like you know what you're talking about. 
Right. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Say it like you mean it. <laughs> Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So if it's not faith, then what's the result? Sin. So what is sin in definition? Missing, missing the, mark. the mark. So if you're missing the mark as to where you're going, then what is it classified as? That's sin. Right? And what keeps you on track? Faith. Faith keeps you on track. So faith in what? God's faith word. in what God says. All right. This is from the message translation. So just listen, unless you have an electronic device that you can get to it. It says, cultivate your own relationship with God, but don't impose it on others. We were having this discussion uh, just last night with, the, with the, my sister in the Lord. You, you know, you got people that you know, are in place in their life, and you got to know that you're going to share the Lord with them. What do they need to see? What do they need to see? You. They need to see how you're living. Right? So it is important. There is a responsibility to it. You know, Charles Barkley said, I am not your mentor. Remember that? Oh, no, unattended towards Charles Barkley. I like him. He's a, he's a good guy. Okay. But he said, he said to, in, in, in the multitude of people over television, I'm not everybody's m mentor. But as a Christian, you have a responsibility to be a light. A light of the world. Isn't that right? So everything matters. Everything is important. And the, and, the, and the hardest people to be a light to is your own family. I mean, you know, out here, out in, in the world, you go to school, whatever, work, you know, all you have to do is don't, don't drink, don't smoke, and don't curse. And you're a light. Isn't that right? But in your home, what's checked? I'm talking your attitude, your eyes, your rolling of the eyes, the turning of the neck, the body language, the silence in the home, everything is judged. Isn't that right? Yes, right. Well, it's, it is a responsibility on our end to maintain our soulish position, meaning that the soul needs to be developed through the channel of prayer and the Word of God. If you don't develop it, then it, it'll get weaker. And it is a known fact. Even psychologists stated that if you don't use your brain, if you don't, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So it, it is, I mean, that's from a, people don't even know, or maybe they do, I don't know. But the, but the thing about it is that with God, God wants us to get, get into words. Get into the Word. Because the Word gives life. It generates health. You, you understand? Okay. All right. So let me, let me continue reading. It says, you're fortunate if your behavior and your belief are coherent. But if you're not sure, if you notice that you are acting in ways inconsistent with what you believe, some days trying to impose your opinions on others... Other, other days, just trying to please them, then you know that you're out of line. Isn't that a pretty easy rule to follow? So, if you're, most of the time, when people are not doing right, living wrong, become legalistic. And legalism takes the place of the grace and the love of God. You understand? So, it, it's easy to come down on somebody, when, especially when you know you're doing wrong yourself. And you got to get rid of the condemnation factor. That's why it's important for you to be a whole person, a whole individual, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Very vital, right? All right. If, if the way you live isn't consistent with what you believe, then it's wrong. So that's the message translation. This is what I like to state to you at this point. Everybody's mind has a measure of maturity. Everybody's mind has a measure of development. So where you are in your development is going to determine how you receive God's Word. So just because you become a Christian does not automatically position you to have illumination, all illumination and understanding of the Bible. It's going to require some purposeful thought and some effort and work on our behalf in order to get our minds in the position that it should be. We got to read Romans chapter 12. Go to Romans chapter 12. We can go there because we want to show, I want to show you scripture on this. Romans 12. Spiritually, we are born again. Spiritually, we have everything that we need to live a godly lifestyle. But soulishly, that is your responsibility. It's our job. It's what we need to do. We have nobody, God is not in charge of the way you think. You have to choose to think right. If you don't think right and you choose not to think right, you will not think right. You understand? So you have to do this on purpose. Romans chapter 12, verse number 2. What does it say? 
and be what? Conform to what? This world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when you talk about the mind, you're talking about the conscience, conscious, and your will. They all have to be renewed, restructured. Because you come into the world with different feelings, because you're directly out of your mother's womb, feeling. First thing you want to do is what? Breathe. Coming out of your mother's womb. <laughs> That's why they cry. The baby's crying, right? Yeah. Isn't that right? You come out of the mother's womb, you're crying. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, they go on living. And then, then after that, then they want to eat and everything else. They start growing. But there's a, there's a maturity factor that goes along with this. So you come out of your womb feeling things, not knowing things. Everybody's mind is empty. So you now are being informed as you, as you grow. And most of the time, what's the first word that most kids learn? No. 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 When you learn how to, we have to retrain that and say, yes, don't touch that. <laughs> yes, don't talk to me like that. No. Okay, but the point being is that it, your mind starts to get structured in this, and then as you go on in life, then <coughs> other things become a little more serious. And because of now you're getting older, and now you're impacting other people's lives, including your own. So that's why it's so vital for you to make sure that you know what God is saying to you. Because you can hear something, and how much... Is everybody here? Now, I'm doing this as a hypothetical here, as an example. Is everyone here? Yes. Because you could be sitting in this seat right here, and have gone on a trip. <laughs> or whatever, you know, I guess the, the old slogan was, you know, what the roast is in the crock pot. And I wonder if I put enough water in it. <laughs> and that whole thought is sitting with you while you're sitting and hearing the pastor speak. Yeah. And you've, you've done, I've done it. You know, you sat, you read your Bible, and then I, all of a sudden a thought hits your mind, and you're still reading. Yeah. You're still reading, but the thought is, is still dominating what's being said. And you would be like habit, just reading, and all of a sudden you're thinking about, oh yeah, I've got to make sure that I'm going to be pain and God so love the world. Yeah, I've got to take care of that response. It gave his only begotten son. They said, wait a minute. What did I just read right now? <laughs> and it, and it's, it, is, it is a ploy of the enemy to stop you from hearing. Yes. So you, I'm, a, I'm sorry, scratch that. From stop, to stop you from listening. Because everybody hears. But whether you listen or not, it depends on the disciplines you create in your own, in your own life. You have to choose to, to discipline yourself that way, okay? So the mind, the mind, when it comes to listening to God, has to be trained. So I, I use the, 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 well, I'm going to have to show you scripture again. I'll give you the word. All right, let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews 1. I'll tell you momentarily. Okay, uh, Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 14. Okay, yeah, this is a very good verse to have. You know, it's one of my favorite verses. And I use it quite often because it helps me to understand what exactly I need to do. I get instructions from this, okay? Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 14. Everybody have it? Uh, it says, But solid food belong... Well, let's, let's read the content of this a little bit, okay? Um, let's read from verse number uh, 12. It says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. Who, who generally needs milk? Babies. Babies, Babies do. And who, has, who eats solid food? Grown-ups, you know, like mature persons, right? As long as you got teeth. Okay. For everyone, verse 13, for everyone who partakes only of milk, what happens? They're unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a what? He is a babe. So if you drink milk, then what tends to happen to you? You start acting like a baby. Right? Even, even have grown adults... Acting like babies? Yep. Yes. Yes. Ever seen a grown dog act like a baby? Mm -hmm. yes. Do grown adults throw tantrums? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not sure. I thought maybe just babies did that. No. <laughs> Big baby. Baby Huey. You remember Baby Huey? Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. He says, verse number 14. This is the emphasis here, okay? But solid food belongs to who? Those who are what? Full age. Which has to do with what? Maturity. 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 That is, and now this is how you know someone's mature. That is, those who by reason of what? Use. Use have their what? 
what are the senses? Taste, touch, smell, hearing, and see. Yeah. Hey, you threw me off on that. <laughs> Seeing, smelling, tasting, hearing, and touching. Isn't that right? Senses. Are senses evil? No. No. Who gave us the senses? God. God gave us the senses, right? Okay, so now. But if the senses are raised, raised up in an environment that breeds negativity, then what's going to be the result? Negative attitude. Negativity. Because what you have, yeah, I think this is the still on, right? I think what you have is untrained senses. And what is the basis, what is the reaction of an untrained, uh, a person who has untrained senses? Lack of control of their emotions. So emotional upsets tend to dominate people who have untrained or undisciplined senses. You understand? So if we take the word and let the word be the base to how the senses should receive information and how we should respond and react to, to different scenarios, then we'll end up being in a place of what? Of maturity or victory. All right. Okay, he says, that is those who by reason, okay, let's, let's read verse 14 again. But solid food belongs to those who, who are of full age, that is those who by reason of use, so uh, what, what is this phrase here, have their senses what? Exercise. What does exercise mean? Train you. Training. You have to train your, your senses. You got you to gotta make sure that what your senses are receiving is from God. Because, because senses... Even though they're a gift of God, but it's the only way that the devil can get into your head. Through the outside circumstances. So if he can mess with your, your life, into your, if he can get into your brain, into your mind, the way he did it is through the door of your senses. So if we train the senses to discern between, well, let's, let's read on. He says, having, uh, uh, who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both what? Good and evil. Why do you have to discern good? Why would you have to discern good? Because is good good? Is good always good? <laughs> what do you think? Good is always good, right? But is it always good for you? No. So you have to determine, like, okay, is it, is it good to go to school? Yeah. Yeah. Is it good to receive a degree in a specific area or whatever that education may be, right? Yeah. Is that a good thing? Yeah. yeah. Have, you, have people gone to school and not fulfilled or done what they went to school for? Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't it a good thing? Yeah. Yeah. Why did they continue doing good? They got sidetracked. And now, and now money has been invested. Because yeah. I, I don't know about you, but I think most of the schools that you go to, you gotta pay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get you get a book, one book. How much is one book? Hundred bucks just for one book, just the book alone, right? And so you're investing your money and your time, and is that a a good thing for you? Yes. Yeah. Not necessarily. It is good for you, but is it the good thing that you should be doing? And that's what you have to determine. That's why he said you have to discern between both good and evil. Because the good that is supposed to be good for you can be turned into evil. All right, so let me go more corrupt then. Should I go more corrupt? <laughs> yes. yeah. go so do so we have an understanding here? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, we'll think about this. All right. Who created sex? God did. Is sex good? Sex very good. Well, I mean, you know, this is the bottom line. Even if you had never experienced it, is sex good? Yes. Yeah. Right. So now, is it always good? No. 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 Why are you guys confused on that? It's always good. There's nothing wrong with sex. Sex is a good thing. But it's not, the only time that it's not good is out of place. Right. Not in its right timing and surrounding. Do you understand? Because there's a lot, uh, there's a lot of money being made off of uh, sex. Yeah. 
Do you, do you guys know about that? Yes. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay, but you know, you understand what I'm saying? There, there are good things that God created, intended. Um, our, our drug is is cocaine good? Yes. No, no. Yes. yes. If you go to if you go no. to the dentist and they inject your mouth with the novo. Hey. Say it again. No. No. What's the last part? Hey. Hey. Where did that come from? <laughs> Where did that come from? Okay. Chemist, you chemist, <laughs> chemist. Where did it come from? Okay. Cocoa puffs? <laughs> <laughs> Cocoa leaves. <laughs> okay, but but the, the point being is that is is it is it is uh is that a good thing? Is 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 uh is marijuana good? Yes. 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 Who's the one who made it? Yes. Who made it? Yes. Who made it? Yes. God made it. Is, is alcohol good? Yes. Everything has its place, you understand? So, so if you use it in its place in the right way it's supposed to be used, it's a good thing. Right? I'm talking about abnormal use, because that's what abuse means, abnormal use of whatever is intended to be a good to you. And who is a pervert? No, no, not, 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 not nobody here. I'm talking, I'm talking about spiritual. Right? Satan is a pervert. He, he perverts what's supposed to be a blessing to us. And I don't know about you, but that, that makes me spiritually indignant. How's that sound? That sound right? Yes. It just bothers me that the devil can come in and mess with people's lives, and I'm talking about believers, and distort their image about who they are in the Lord Jesus Christ, and then their life is jacked. It, 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 it bothers me. I don't, I don't like it. But all I can say, Hosea 4, 6, what does it say to us? My people are what? Destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge because they what? They reject it. Because they reject that knowledge. And it is where people are in their lives. It's not a matter of that. that is the knowledge out there? Do you, how many of you have done research papers? Is it is the internet handy for research papers? Oh yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, I now I got I got my you know my Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, this big old book, and you got and I gotta have my glasses, magnifying glasses, to be able to see all the letters in it because of how much of the Hebrew and the Greek is in there. But you know, I can get that online. I have all these books at my disposal, all kinds of stuff on the internet. But are there other ways that the internet is used? Is the internet bad? No. Isn't it a good thing? <laughs> Who created it? Was the internet in the Garden of Eden? Yes. 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 It was. It just had not been revealed to Adam and Eve yet. He had, they, did, they, did, they did not find it yet. You understand? It was, everything that we needed for life and godliness was already here. It was. It was. Eden was the model for mankind. Eden. Eden was the crib for man. The baby, the nursery. Eden, the Garden of Eden, was the nursery for man. And God put everything in Eden so that it can grow from there to increase in the, in the world, in the earth. You understand? And God wanted Adam and Eve to do it. He said, I give you what? Dominion over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And over all the fowl of the air, he gave Adam that dominion. Gave him that rule. For what? What's the reason? To grow. To grow. Yeah, to prosper, to get to a, a greater place. Not to say, look at what I have. That's, if you're thinking that way, get it out. That is not you. You don't even have to question that about yourself. That's not you. Get it out. God wants to increase you so that you can be a greater blessing to people. Say, I'm a blessing. Turn to the person next to you and say, you're not a curse. And tell them again, you are a blessing. Say, I'm a blessing. Ready to be a blessing. Praise the Lord. Isn't that right? Because that's the way God made us. We are not cursed people. 
We've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Okay, right. All right. So, discerning between both good and evil, right? It's going to require the renewing of the mind. It's going to take some time and some effort on your part to keep your mind straight so you, when things come your way, whatever's coming through the sensual, you know what's sensual? Uh, James chapter, I believe it's chapter 4, chapter 3. It talks about earthly, devilish, sensual wisdom. Because the devil is aware of the fact that the way to get to people's minds, saved or unsaved, is through the senses. He has no other way. He has to go from the outside in. He does not know your thoughts. You all know that, right? He does not know what you're thinking. The only way he can know it is if you let him know. It. So, you, so you, you keep him in the dark. But at the same time, don't be scared to speak. If I came into your home to take your babies away from you, and I'm I'm coming in and I'm gonna violate I'm gonna violate your home. I'm gonna walk into your house and I'm gonna slap you upside your head and grab your children and walk out. That's what you say. <laughs> if an enemy enters into the home, talk about Christians. I am sending that person to heaven or to hell. Amen. Come in my house. Unannounced. I'm going to check you at the door. And I have to allow for you to come into my home. You, you understand? And if, you're, if you are coming in forcefully, I'm going to forcefully attack you back. You, you are not going to harm my family. That's not happening. Why is that? I mean, that's that's the way the way so why do we let the devil come in and mess with our heads? Right. Your head is the house. And, it's, and, it's, and it has to be renewed. What, so Romans 12, 2, is that where you're at right now? Romans 12, 2. He says, and Hebrews 5, 14. Uh, go back to Romans 12. Sorry. Because our minds are fickle and subject to what is known as would be the um, the loin of attack. You know what I mean by loins? Yeah. The loin area. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, may I use you as an example? There you go. You stand right here. Now this is a marine. If I were to fight him, I would have a, I would have a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stand face, stand face o open up your legs like this, all the way, like up. All right. I'm gonna fight him. Okay. This man has some skills. Okay. He, he wasn't trained to fight. He was trained to take people out. Period. So he's not going to fight me. He's going to stop me. Alright? So, with all his skill and all his training, I won't do this. I have, a, I have enough skill to know this. <laughs> What's going to happen? <laughs> all the skill he has just went out the door. He's going to go down. Going down. Right? It doesn't matter how, how much know, how much he knows and everything, all that. Knife, gun, fight. Huh! That's it. <laughs> He's vulnerable. Okay, thank you. That's called the loin. That's the loin. And the Bible says that we are to gird up the loins of our mind. And the Bible is specific on how it says to us instructions on how we're supposed to care for the way we think. So you factor in that the loin area, in spite of knowledge-wise, how much skill you have, your mind is susceptible to attacks. Is it possible for you to be intimidated? Have you ever walked into a dark room? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're fine. You walk in the room, you're fine. And then you feel something. And all it is, is a thought. Hits your mind, but it makes your body chill up, get goosebumps. Is that what you call goosebumps? I would say goose pimples, but it's goosebumps. Right? <laughs> all of a sudden, you feel this thing on you. It's like, and I've experienced it before, and I was like, you yeah, the name of Jesus, get out. I'm not accept this intimidation, and on purpose, I'll stay in that dark room to let the devil know I'm not being intimidated. Okay, yeah. so that's just a hypothetical, you know? And, and, but uh, uh, again, it's a, it's a real, people really do go through that kind of stuff. And, and um, okay, I have a thing about spiders. I don't, I don't like spiders. I don't like spiders. 
you know, spiders stay outside. You know, stay outside. You're fine. You kill all the bugs, keep the bugs out of my plants. But you come in the house. I do not like it because they're so silent, and I don't know where they're going to land. You know, like I was, I was telling you the other day, I was sitting on my couch, and next thing I know, and you know how you peripherally? Yeah. And here it comes. And you see a little creepy legs coming down, and, and I just got the chill on me. It's like, oh, <laughs> and it dropped. Of, for some reason, it got away. Just boom. And then my our, our couch is dark. So I'm, so now, what am I dealing with? I'm dealing with a mental thought of a spider that could be on the couch that could come on me and give me a little bite. And I'm tripping. I'm, I'm gonna find you, you little rat. I'll find you. So eventually I found him and I took authority. But it's, what is that? What is this? It's just a thought. It's just a thought of fear. Isn't that right? And that's just, that's just, that's something lighthearted. I mean, you know, I mean, I guess it could take your life if it's the wrong spider. But the, but the point being is that, is that there are a lot of things in life that come our way that are intended to intimidate us. Put us in the place of backing up rather than moving forward. So say this, I am not one who draws back. I push forward. I push forward. See, you got to set your mind that I am here to win, not to lose. Hear this. Defeat is not an option. No. No. Will you face defeat? Yes. Oh yeah. But it is not an option because what defeat's intent is to set in your mind impossibility. I will choose not to allow impossibilities for me to move ahead. Yes. I'm not going to let it happen. Someone says, okay, so then now you're at this particular uh, age in your life. What are you going to do for your future? You are at a place where you have a job where, where it brings in a specific amount of income. And in your mind you say, or you're processing this, and words are being stated to you that you only have a certain amount of time to get what you need in order to make sure that your golden years are taken care of. Yeah. And there's truth in that. Yeah. You need to do your due diligence. Mm -hmm. Set yourself up for success. Yeah, right. You have to do that. But at the same time, what tends to go on in our lives when it comes to the things of the future? Negative. It, isn't it amazing? that the only time we really think about leaving this earth is when someone passes away. We don't really think about it because there's a responsibility that comes along with it. There's other things that need to be taken care of. It doesn't just fix itself. You have to prepare yourself. Again, we're, li we're choosing to live or press towards what mark? 120 years. That's the lifespan that was promised in Genesis chapter 6. And 175 is a record. So, so again, where, where are you when it comes to what you hear? You, you, uh, are there different challenges that people face in their bodies? Yeah. Yeah. Physical challenges? Yeah. Blood issues? Yeah. Joint issues? How many mental issues? All these things that take place in people's lives that it's intended to stop you from progressing. Right. Right. But see, remember this. God is your helper. Yes. If God is on your side, you will not fail. Amen. Yes. That's right. If you follow and stay with what God promises you, stay in it, uh -huh. you're only going to win. Yes. Yes. Now, I'm not saying you won't face failure, because how many of us in here have sinned since they've been a Christian? Any, any hands? Any yeah. hands will go? No, do it. All the rest of you all, y'all, doing good? The rest of y'all, nobody else? Okay. Well, you know you've missed the mark. We all have. But the thing about it is that you're not a failure because you fail. You're a failure because you give up and you lose sight of the victory. You have to set your mind to win. Say, I'm not a loser. Say, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Okay, go to Philippians chapter 3. 
Uh, we already finished with Romans chapter 12, right? <laughs> be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That was the emphasis. And I wanted to express to you that the senses are a part of this. What, oh, let me just point this out. Our sense, where are the senses at? In your mind. On your head. In, in your, really, it's, it's, they're on your body, but where are they connected? Your mind. So, to your mind. Your mind, right? So if you train your mind, you train your senses. But you got to train your mind. The way you train your mind is how, how do you, okay, let me, let, me, let me give you a hypothetical here, or an example here. Okay, all right, I'm going to give you a word, and then I want you to use your imagination with this word. You ready? All right. Dog. I'm going to say it again. Ready? Get your minds working. Don't fall asleep. Dog. All right, what did you see? Dog. Poodle. Anything else? German Shepherd? Did anybody see the letters D O G? Anybody? Nobody? Most people, what do they see? An image. And see, that, and, that, and God knew it from the beginning. When He told Abraham, he, he, when he was entering into a covenant relation with Abraham, God entering into a covenant relation with Abraham, he, he told him, go outside, and I want you to look to the stars, look to the sky, and, and, see, if, and see if you can count them. What, what God was doing is making Abraham's creativity, which is imagination, to start working, and vision was the result. What was his vision? How many people did he see from 90 years, 99 years of age? And I don't know about you seniors, having a baby at 90 years of age. Seniors? Oh, no. Have any volunteers? <laughs> at 90 years of age. It's a very difficult thing to, for the body to go through at that age because the body's strength has been depleted, right? Throughout the years, it's just a normal aging factor. Well, you know, again, not getting old, but aging. Okay. Sarah had a baby at 90 years, of an age, uh, 90 years of age, and Abraham was still able to perform at 99 years of age. The result was an Isaac. Isn't that right? So now, did Abraham see, physically see, the fruition of what God promised him? No. Did he physically see it? No. Did he physically see it? I'm talking about here in the, in the earth, in his physical body, did he see it? No. He did not. And so you factor in that when he looks at the stars and he received the promise by faith, he believed God's word and received the promise by faith and saw a vision of what God had promised him in spite of whether it came to pass or not during his lifespan. He stood true to what he saw, what God spoke to him. You all, you all hear this? You, you, you have to have that, that resilience against the things that want to stop you from moving forward. Don't let age be a factor. Don't let it, don't let it mess with you. Don't let what you poured in in your past education years, don't let it be a factor. Let the truth of the word dominate, radiate inside of you. God is your provider. God provides. He is called Jehovah Jireh, one of his names, right? Okay, Philippians, now go Philippians chapter 3. So do you all get that analogy? The fact that senses are neurologically connected to our brains and it's intended to create imagery in our minds so that we can progress. That's the intent. God gave us an imagination to use it. Right? Yeah. And, and, and this is where I say to, to us believers that common sense cannot always be the right thing. Co sense, senses have to be trained. Sometimes our common is not right. It's common to you because it's common to how you're used to dealing with things. But if it's not the word, then it's not good common sense. <laughs> right? So we got to get our senses trained to what God says. All right? So Philippians chapter 3, verse 11. He says, If by any means I might attain... Uh, uh, un unto the resurrection of the dead. Uh, verse, uh, verse 11. Philippians chapter 3, verse 11. 
Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, and this is, the, this is a very important principle here, forgetting the things which are behind me. Forget, forget your past failures. Forget it. And look ahead for what God has, what God has put in you. So the only channel, just remember this, the devil can only use your past to intimidate you. Yeah. That's, the only, that's the only thing he can do. He'll come back with all your negativity, all the stuff you did, how you couldn't control your emotions, how you couldn't control your words, how you couldn't control whatever. Right? And then intimidate you to say to you that you cannot do it. And that is a lie. You on purpose forget the stuff that wants to hold you back from moving forward. And I'll say this. Um, uh, see, who's a strong guy? John, you're a strong guy, right? Uh, I think you're a strong guy. All right. How much you benching? Right you don't. Hey, Elijah, how much you benching? How much you benching right now? Uh, 225. 225. All right. Is, is that your max? 225. What's your max? I thought it was more. I thought she did more than that. I, I don't oh, all right, all right. Okay. Is, okay, anybody got any higher than that? 225? Anybody got more? <laughs> okay, in my max years, right now probably 245. Not even. Right now. I could probably go up. No, seriously. But in my max years was 315. I had 315. I was able to do that one time, you know, which was okay, you know, for me. And, and, and okay, so now. And let's say in my max years, I have the 315, 315 pounds, mm -hmm. and I have, uh, I have, Ariel, stand up, uh, Ariel, stand up, Ariel, everybody look at Ariel, let <laughs> me see Ariel, all right, let me see, you got the image, okay, Ariel, I'm going to lift this for you, you're going to lay on the bench, and I'm going to lift that 315 pounds for you, up, and I'm, no, you can be holding on to it, though. okay, and then I'm going to let go of it. Bye, Ariel. With, <laughs> with <laughs> all your ribs and everything will be crap. Okay, so it comes. Is she capable of benching, pressing, three hundred fifteen pounds? Yeah. Any, anybody else in here? Two forty-five. How about two forty-five? Two forty-five. I'll put you to the test on that. Hey, right. I'm ready. All right. All right. All right. right. Two forty-five. Benching two forty-five. Right. Two fifty-five. Go on one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Point being is that you, when you develop through pressing, you're going to develop what? Strength. <clears throat> That's why he says here, brother, I count on myself to appreh apprehend it, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are ahead. What's the next verse? Say it. I can't hear you. Say it again. I press. I press. If your life depended on it, if your life depended on it, would you push that? I know of, a, of when I was in high school, Mar I went to Maranatha High School, and my teacher was teaching, uh, I forgot what type of math it was, man, it was measuring velocity and, and inertia and all these different formulas, right? I'm not, I forgot what it, what it was termed. Was it physics? I think it was physics. Yeah, you're right. It was physics. But anyway, she tells me a story. She doesn't believe it now, okay? She says, okay, I've had, I've had this situation. She says, because this is the thing. When Jesus walked through the wall, he was, she was talking about laws. And Jesus walked through the door. You remember that? And he appeared to the disciples. Remember, after the resurrection, he came back and he walked through the door. He didn't ask to, he didn't knock on the door, he just walked through the door. How could he walk through the door? And that was her question to us. She was using physics to show us the spiritual realm and how real it is. And she said, the reason why Jesus was able to walk through the door, because that is not solid. Even the chair you're sitting on is not solid. So, so all, all of the molecules lined up in Jesus' body. He was perfect. So he was able to scientifically proven to walk through the door because he was perfect. Even physically. Do you, do you, do you understand? She says, now think about this. I had, and this is a true story, 
my son was, we were in, we were in the car, we are driving, and a, and a truck hit us. We flew out of the car. I landed outside of the car. She, uh, he, was underneath the car. The car landed on top of him. She's, in her mind, thinking what? I need to save my son. You know what she did? She picked the car up. She went and lifted that car, and he was able to get out. So you can't tell me if your life depended on it that you would not be able to do it. Because you can do it. And I'm not doing that saying it based on her life. I'm stating based on what how God has empowered us. Yes. You you know this. You know, some of you are mothers, and some of you are maybe eventually, you know, you'll have that motherly instinct. And when it comes to mama bear mentality, yeah, you you go, you go, you're ready. It doesn't matter who you face. It's on. Isn't that right? Well, God put that in us. He put, us, he put it in us to press through things. We forget what's behind because what's behind wants to keep us down. Okay, let's, let's look at one more verse and then we'll stop with this. Okay, Let's go to Hebrews uh, chapter, e, chapter 12. Sorry. Chapter 12, we're going to read verse number 1. Ah. There it is. You okay? Okay. Verse number 1. You ready? Yeah. Okay. This is now, this is New King James Version. Okay. He says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him. So think about that. The joy that, it, that was set before him. What did he do? He endured the cross. So we all have this perfect image. I don't, I, don't, I don't think anybody since I've been alive has depicted what Jesus went through better than Mount Gibson's passion. Yeah. Passion of the Christ. I mean, you, you just, oh, yeah. is you either you're gonna get angry, yeah. or you're gonna be so saddened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was so powerful, yeah. you know. But to me, it gives gives us the the image because the scripture says that his face was not recognizable. Mm -hmm. That's how badly he was beaten. So you factor in that that type of torment that he went through did it require some strength? Yes. Oh, yeah. Did it require some discipline? Did he not stand? Mm -hmm. Did he not? Yes. And no. Jesus did it because he saw you. In spite of how we live our lives, Jesus goes beyond all that negativity and says, I am for you. I died for you. I paid the price for you. So you can have life and you can have it more abundantly. That's Jesus. So he says... Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy... And who, who, turn to the person next to you say, you're joy. Say, say it this way, you are a joy. That's how God sees you. You are a joy. That's how God sees you. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Now, mind you, they did not have nothing covering him. He was totally... Disgraced, totally shamed. In other words, no clothes on. That's a, the only thing is, is that you know we have to do it because of television and all. But the way that was done was to humiliate him. Y'all understand? He did it in spite of the shame that came along with that, right? He says, "Where, where are we at?" Okay, shame. and has sat down. Now, lift your. Who better to sit at the right hand of the Father? Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. I lift my hands to you. I'm surrendered. Who better a person than Jesus Christ? He's an honor. 
So, look what it says. Has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Yes. What greater honor? Yes. What greater honor is that? And who did he do it for? Uh, for us. us. If Jesus did not die for us, where would we be at? Where would we be right now? Probably not here be. If you didn't accept Jesus as the Lord of your life, where would you be today? And I don't know about you, you know, I, I mean, I had knucklehead days in my life, you know. You know I, was, I was stupid. I did dumb things. And I did. I thought I was, man, I was just, and I wanted to, I, you know, I wanted to be a killer. That was my game. That was my, my aim. I was going to be a hit man. I was going to be taking people out. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, Jesus, that you say peace. Uh, that was my goal. I want, you know, I, I want, I was going to do it. I'm, I was already prepping for it. <laughs> Doing stupid things. <clears throat> but the Lord saved me. Yeah. Brought me out of that mess. Do you, do you understand? So now, if it were not for the Lord in our lives, where would it be? I, I wouldn't be here. You guys wouldn't be here. This right. church right here would be here. You wouldn't have a seat. We would not be talking to each other. I would not have a Sabrina or a Gilbert or Asha or you guys. Wouldn't be here. I'd be gone. And I was, a, I was getting to the place where I did not care. And I was only 14 years of age. And I did not care. You don't even, I cannot even tell you what I've done. Some of the stuff I've done. Now, I care for you. God does. God cares for you. The Lord loves you. God cares for you. So I am here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Y'all have a purpose. I mean, y'all, you, you're important to me. Y'all play your, you know, we all help each other. That's right. You know? So, we're going to stop there. Thank you for... Wow, it was not on internet. So. Well, I'm still recording. It's on, oh yeah, it's on recording. So, well, we'll get it. <laughs>